Right, morning everybody. So we've got our top uh, producers here. The um, obviously minus Christelle because she doesn't like to make movies, but <laughs> the um, we will catch her later with the input. So the the point of this exercise is we've got we, in our group we have agents that are performing not on top of our uh, uh, performance levels within our company. These guys are performing up there with the best in the country. So we have to understand that they're doing something right. And we, I'm going to ask them a couple of questions and just sit and listen. And I've got questions from you guys. I've got questions of my own and I'm going to pose them to them and they're going to tell us what they do in a short way, just to try and give us some insight to what does a top producer even mean? And what, is it, what does he do all day? You know, because uh, we all think we're awesome at our jobs, but uh, sometimes the numbers don't tell you with reality. So let's see what these guys do. So the, they're going to tell us what they do. Now also take take what they do and um, and see how it fits into your life. And what I suggest you do is if you find something that you like or want to try, that you maybe talk to um, either the, the team leader or Linda or I about it before you just go ahead and do it. Because it may not fit. And another good idea, what I would probably say to you after we've discussed it, is talk to the person whose idea it is. So you talk to Gary or Rob and say, look, you're doing this. I also want to do it. And they'll say, well, you can't or you can. You know what I mean? Okay. So let's kick off. Um, let's kick off with Rob. Rob, uh, the first question is, how did you get started? And when you did get started, did you try and learn everything before you started trading? Or... Or did you just start doing it? You know, what, what did you do? Um, so I was, I was allocated a sort of mentor type of person when I first started. Two weeks later, I just said to the mentor, you know, with respect, you're a great mentor and everything. I just want to do it on my own. Um, and yeah, you, know, you might make a few mistakes. I spoke to a lot of people that are obviously more experienced, etc. But I just felt that doing it practically as opposed to following somebody's uh, coattails, I just felt for me it worked a whole lot better. So I literally had somebody shadowing me for two weeks and then I, I went on my own. Cool. Uh, Gary, your thoughts on that? Remember, I told you that somebody would forget to unmute themselves. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll start again. My first five years with, with sorry was with Chaz Everett. I had a mentor there. She was another agent, uh, actually. And um, yeah, I did the same as Rob, actually. For two weeks, she just uh, shadowed me. Um, they said they would support me for six months, but that didn't happen. And you know what? I just jumped in. And I jumped in on sexual title. Well, that was my mandate from Chaz Everett. Um, okay. Sexual title is the best way to get started for the first couple of years. Okay, Gary. Malcolm, how did you get this? What is your position on this? Uh, well, unlike the two guys, um, Anton, um, I wasted a lot of time on a research, doing books and, uh, you know, going all over until I found a book that said, hey, you've been planning and planning and planning. Now go and do it. That's when then I started. I said, now that's the time. No more research, no more checking, what, what. Let me start working. Okay. I understand. Kathy, what's your mm -hmm. thoughts on this? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Um, okay. Uh, no, what I did was I did very similar to what the other guys did. Came in, they gave me someone that um, I suppose was supposed to shadow. Um, to be quite frank, she was quite useless. Um, she had still had things in her inbox that she hadn't answered for two weeks. And that just didn't sit well with me, especially having been a buyer. Um, I kind of thought to myself, if I had sent an agent a, a message two weeks ago and they were only getting back to me now, I didn't look like a very good agent. And not only that, everybody that I then phoned for her that was inquiring on properties, of course, they'd all gone on and bought something else. So you learn very, very fast that if you don't act fast, 
um, it, it's just not going to happen. That literally the minute that I get a inquiry, I will, I'll, I'll make that phone call. That's what you've got to do, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay, that, that's quite a good start, I think. That shows, um, I think I get a sense there that uh, patiently waiting for this to develop into a career and learning all the background stuff and that is not the answer. I've, I get a real sense of urgency amongst these people. So the top performers look urgent and it looks like they are not waiting for things to happen, but co creating their own uh, work, which is very obvious, but not what everybody I can see is doing. Okay. The second uh, thing that I was wanting to do, maybe we can start. Um, maybe we can start with Malcolm this time. Um, Malcolm, what is your average day, or what is, you know, what is the structure of your life? What do you do? Because, like, you know, do you get out of bed at ten o'clock and then what? Go to lunch, or what do you? What's your day? Oh yes, Antin. Yes. Um... Well, the structure of my day is uh, it's, uh, mostly uh, research, sitting on the computer, searching for those properties, and then uh, obviously setting appointments. I try and phone as, as many, uh, uh, you know, clients, prospects, you know, maybe reminding them that I'm still there. So that is sort of what I'm, you know, trying to put my, 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 uh, my name out there driving around in my area, maybe putting one or two boards, uh, you know, just to try and, you know, attract more uh, sellers in the area. So, yes, it's uh, kind of uh, busy. There is no, uh, I mean, how can you get a break? There is a lot to do in real estate, yeah. And we just over to <laughs> Did you guys hear anything? Yeah, we did. Oh, good. <laughs> How Gary, can you give us your input on that? Uh, typical day, it's not every day, I'm not perfect by any means, is um, desktop morning. So morning, get up early with the kids, which is a good thing because then your day starts early. Uh, do emails, a bit similar to Malcolm. Uh, do your CMAs, your Lightstones, whatever the case may be. And then basically the uh, lunchtime in the afternoon and the evening is basically field work. That's the simple way I split my day. Because, and I'll tell you why very quickly, is that very few buyers will go and see something at 9, 9.30, 10 in the morning. And of course there's traffic, etc. So you just got to work smart. So... Desktop morning, in the field in the afternoon, and early evening. Okay, thank you. Um, Kathy, what is your usual day? Um, also, I get up and, and rather do my admin in the morning because the minute the phone starts ringing, then you are stuffed. Literally, somebody will phone and say, I want to see the property at half past 12, and you've got to literally get in your car and go, um, I'm not one of those agents that says, oh, no, sorry, I'm fully booked. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, I will get in the car and I will go at, at half past 12. And if I can't do it at half past 12, I'll do it at one o'clock. And I just fit them all in as, as the day goes. So a lot of the time I can only have two appointments in a day. And a lot of the time I can do seven in one day. It just depends on, I never plan my day. Unfortunately, my job plans my day for me. But you start, but you start in the morning by doing, which is really plenty. Just, just, yeah. yeah, it's well, it's just all my admin as in answering any mails and, uh, you know, trying to go through deals and that sort of thing. But uh, um, yeah, to, to get back to the clients, I, I usually would have already got back to the clients that I have requested. And if they've only requested overnight, then I'll do that in the morning. Okay, okay uh, Rob? Yep. Yeah, so as, as Gary and, and Kathy both say, um, you've got to clear your desk in the morning. Um, so in fact, actually, just to go back one step, I was corporate for many years before, and starting time there was 8 o'clock in the morning. So I treat this job as exactly the same thing. By 8 o'clock, I'm in the office working, clear the desk, make sure all your emails have been answered, any phone calls, etc. that have been answered. 
Um, and then generally, you know, if you are busy, as Kathy says, you, the, the business drives you to a large extent in that people will phone you for appointments to view. You've got uh, houses out there that are on the listings, et cetera. Um, and yeah, then obviously make sure that your cold calling is done, research for uh, new, new property valuations, et cetera. But it's, it's as Malcolm says, there should be no, no spare time and there is no spare time. I start at eight o'clock in the morning and quite often I'll get back at home at eight o'clock at night. Okay. Cool. Okay. I hope that gives you guys a bit of a sense of, of what, what these guys do for a living. Um, okay. Well, let's start with Rob, seeing as though his voice is the warmest. Rob, uh, which, is, which works better? Because you've done both. You've worked alone and now you've got the uh, grace or misfortune to be in a team. Uh, what, what is, um, maybe I can mute Rob and I'll mute her so she can't even shout out. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a bit of a loaded question. She happens to be sitting right opposite the desk with me at the moment. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think my camera was going to work. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, no, look, there's, there's, there's benefits to both. Um, I was never particularly in favor of, of a partnership in my early days. But what we found now works really, really well is that Robin's got a, a teaching background and I've got an IT background. So when we go and do a valuation on a house, invariably we, we drive the conversation to what do the people do, all that. And it's either they've got a teaching background or the kids go to certain schools, they've got an IT background. And that just, I think, helps to cement the relationship between us and potential sellers. We always put aside two hours for every valuation. So between Robert and I, that's four hours that we invest on, on that valuation. Um, and I think it's, it's not about giving them a price on a house. It's about building a relationship. They want to work with us by the time we walk out of there. And I would say we get nine out of 10 valuations that we do. We, we end up by getting exclusive mandates invariably. So yeah, it does work very well. Then of course, you've got all the other benefits of you know, covering for each other. If somebody's sick or going on leave, you know, like Robin's going to be doing on the 12th of December for a very, very long time. You know, I can cover for that. Oh, I know, it's disgusting, isn't it? Though? Absolutely disgusting. Eh? But yeah, so it's, it's got that. Um, even when we talking to some buyers, we will talk to them together, taking an offer to purchase, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that. And often you're going to get somebody up by 50 or 100,000. Um, and then obviously convincing the, the seller at the end of the day to accept the the uh, offer. So yeah, I think it works really, really well. And having a good partner obviously is, is crucial. Okay, good. Um, G Gary, you've been uh, in a partnership and out of a partnership as well. Um, what's your, well, how do you, what is your thoughts on that? Um, well, I, I know Michelle's on the call here. <clears throat> it's also a loaded question, but um, you know, Michelle had her set of skills and I had mine and they worked quite well. Uh, when we had the Parkhurst portfolio uh, that turned into a tough market um, in the parks area at some stage, because we were going for sort of higher priced properties. So as they say, the, the downside to a partnership is that unfortunately you've got to double your turnover to make a living and that wasn't happening. So we decided to go our, our, our own ways, but it can work because everybody's got their different skill set, And obviously uh, in Michelle's case, she had, she was far much, far better at marketing and social media and all these kind of things than I am. So, you know, that greatly helped. But independence, um, yeah. If you can control everything yourself, then yeah, I prefer that, right? Yeah, and what, what is the position on Gary, if I ask, if you, if you are independent, you don't have a partner. Is there any value in hooking somebody by the ear and saying, hey, uh, Sutu, come with me. I need somebody just with me for this listing. Can that work? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you're only one person. Um, you, if you plan, as somebody said earlier, if you plan well, I think it was Kathy. If you plan well, you can do everything for yourself. Okay, cool. It, it's all about planning. Okay, cool. Thank you. Malcolm, what is your thoughts on you? Um, Malcolm, you've never worked in a, in a partnership. What is your thoughts on going it alone? Are you, would you think of a partner? Malcolm? 
Malcolm, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes. Anton, you asking um, the um, alone part or with a partner? Yeah, what do you, I mean, you've, yes. you've worked alone most of your career. What is your thoughts on partners or being alone? Or? Uh, for, for me, I think there is a, a, a lot, definitely a lot of work. Um, there, there is a lot of work, uh, but uh, because I don't have experience with the partners, uh, I don't know how I would allocate or we would with the other uh, partner, uh, you know, sort of allocate. Somebody should do this, somebody should do that, or we all do the same thing and, and stuff of, uh, and stuff like that. I'm not sure on, on that note. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I find out that, you no, know, they at the end of the day, I find out that there's a couple of things that I haven't done that I wanted to do. And... Um, uh, to be honest, I'm kind of a little bit slower, uh, and I find that maybe two days I had I didn't do one other thing. So there is a lot of work, definitely. Uh, partnering might be a solution, maybe. Okay. It's a maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kathy, um, sorry, you asked a question. I'll I'll, I'll um, put it in the chat, uh, Sutin. I'll ask it for you. Um, Kathy, what is your? You've got a partner. And your I've got a partner. He's he's <laughs> he's more of a silent partner now. Um, yeah. His wife hasn't let him out the house since COVID started. Um, I think we've been to about four appointments, but he phones me about ten to fifteen times a day, uh, usually to tell me he's phoned this person and he's phoned that person. He's very good at the phoning part. I find I don't have time for that, to be very honest with you. Um, once my admin's finished and I get in the car, then the, my, day, my day really starts. And I haven't got time to do cold calling. He normally goes back to his old customers um, and phones all of them. And that's where we're getting a hell of a lot of our stock from, is a lot of his old, old, really old customers. Um, most of our business is his repeat business. So um, unfortunately, I can't take, I can't take, uh, anything for that if I do go um, I have sold a good couple of properties on my own and those are ones that I have hunted for myself online um, I do most of my hunting online instead of called actually phone calling okay cool okay I must um, just tell you guys that uh, you know it's universally accepted that the highest turnovers are generated by partnerships so, you know, whether we, you like them or not, or use them or don't, just know that the very successful agents are typically in partnerships or have at least got a very strong admin person associated with them. You don't get these single agents that just cruise around doing it all by themselves. Okay. So, and I think that's what Malcolm's experiencing where his workload starts catching up on you and you become slower and slower and slower and you, you will miss out on stuff. The next question really is about CRM and um, uh, the tool to talk to your, your customers. And then I've, I've bundled it with um, so, social media. You know, what, what, how do we work with those? So perhaps, um, perhaps Rob, you can start us off with that. Uh, you know, what is, uh, what, do you even spend money on social media? Do, do you spend money or do you just spend time? How does it work with that and CRM? So I work in a, in a fairly small area <clears throat> and my whole philosophy is to be extremely visible in that area. Hopefully, you know, there's a sell sign or a for sale sign on every kind of second corner, that type of thing. Um, we do do a lot of, of marketing, um, poll, street poll ads, uh, dust, dustbin adverts, we do drops, uh, we, we sponsor things at the local markets and in the area, we're on the committee, so, you know, and my car is branded. So whenever I'm driving around the area, if somebody doesn't know who Rob is, then, you know, they, they've got to be bloody blind type of thing. So that's my philosophy behind the whole thing. Um, and it, it, it does work well. You know, I think it does work well. So the, the spin-off from that, and I know I'm digressing a bit, but the spin-off from that is people tend to phone me a lot when they want evaluation. So I don't spend too much time in terms of the cold calling and hunting online. But I do use Maureen all the time for cold calling. So it's not that I, I exclude that. Social media, um, my daughter's actually doing that at the moment. And we're spending about a thousand rand a month on paid advertising for that. And I think we're getting some good results on that one. 
CRM, I'd have to confess, I don't use particularly well. And that's only because of, of historically, I've always done things myself before CRM ca even came in. I had my database, I've got it set up that I can send out automatically uh, birthdays via email um, and, and Word documents, etc. So all that is already in there. We produce our own um, pamphlets and brochures, which have everything to do with the schools, everything that's local, of local interest, etc. So CRM is a great system. I personally don't use it. I'm certainly not saying that's the right thing to do is to not use it, but yeah, it's a great tool. You just got to be out there the whole time. You've got to be visible. No one's going to phone Joseph if he's never heard of Joseph. Okay, cool. Thank you, Rob. Um, Gary, what's your take on social media and CRM databases? Okay, not uh, same as Rob, not my strength. Um, I think <laughs> a few people will know that, including Michelle. Um, after working with her. Uh, what I do do is just use other means of visibility. I'm also doing some market advertising, as Rob said, in our local area. I am a generalist agent. Uh, however, what works for me is sectional title visibility, get your boards up if you've sold. Obviously, my car is branded. And also, matching. Matching buyers can be done on your phone. If you've got a system on your phone where let's say you're at Sun Mountain, which you've had a lot of success at, just code it, SM1, bring on the buyers on your phone. So when SM2 goes on the market, literally within minutes, you've got six buyers. That's worked well in the past in Northcliffe. And um, some of the best agents out there, you know, like the Graham Reeds, who turns over millions a year, that's what he does. When, a, when somebody comes on the market, he's got the buyer to take that same day. And often he sells in one day. That's the epitome of matching. Okay, thank you. Um, what do you think, Kathy? Databases um, in social media? Are you okay. on social media? So CRM, after our last meeting, I went and did a, a, a whole um, newsletter. And um, over the few days, I've got to be honest, I think I've had about, probably about, 30 or 35 bounce backs. So the email exists, the email address didn't exist or whatever it was. So it just kept on bouncing back. Um, I must say what works better for us is your, your pet peeve. And um, our most, uh, uh, our biggest success story is, <laughs> is Courtney's flyers. Once a month, we send out Courtney's flyers and they are atrocious, but they work. Because he writes on the back and he's very, very frail old writing. Uh, we have a developer looking for a 3 million rand um, development stand in Ferndale, an acre. We have a, uh, someone looking for a four bedroom fixer upper. And inevitably there will be someone that will phone us on that day or the day after or the day after. Or they keep, they keep that flyer on their fridge. And it's 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 terrible. It is horrendous. Anton's about to show you, I'm but trying to, I'm trying to but it works. <laughs> but it works. I, I think I've burned it. Okay. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, what do you? What's your take on on social media? Malcolm, you still with us? Oh, all right, yes. Um, uh, Antin, I thought it was only me um, on the CRM. Um, uh, I'm not active enough, obviously, and uh, I think uh, probably we need a good training on that, on the CRM, uh, so that we can, you know, master it and uh, go forth with it. Um, when we had those guys, um, uh, who were helping us? Uh, what are their names again? Do you remember? Uh, These guys that came, they gave some training um, with their database. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. oh, the old mass lead squared guys. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. At least I was getting the hang of it there. And mm -hmm. I was, you know, sort of uh, trying to... to to keep up but uh since then uh definitely i know crm i've i've, I've listened to uh coaches that tell you that crm you will never go wrong you mm -hmm. can uh put somebody on your database and uh, you know they don't sell they don't sell and they can sell in five years 
So if you got their data, you know, you, you are a winner. Even in five years' time or so, you'll still win them. Mm -hmm. Facebook as well, um, not that brilliant. I just post maybe a for sale now and then and sometimes get one or two likes, uh, but um, I, I haven't actually spent money on it. So mm -hmm. I believe this will answer the, uh, uh, your next question uh, that's saying... Uh, how will I grow my business? Uh, so that, that's where my business will grow. CRM, I'm going to take it uh, with full hands and uh, maybe the Facebook. Uh, branding a car, I see that these um, uh, top agents, they branded their cars. <laughs> so yeah. yes, 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 I'm on it. Okay, cool. Thanks, Malcolm. Okay, so the... One important thing to remember is that the guys that say they're not using databases um, actually have been in the business for 10 years in the area. So Kensington B, Kathy and Courtney, you don't need a database. Everybody knows Kathy and Courtney in Kensington B. Rob in Rand Park, you know, good luck trying to find another agent in there because that's where he is. So just be careful of the use of data and, and, and marketing compared to 10 years time because Rob started with a database and he's been 10 years of using it. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, and, yeah, and I didn't say I don't have a database. Yes. I've got an extensive database, but it's an Excel-based one. Yes. Um, and I find it works well for me. Yeah. Uh, everyone's got access to it, Robin, Maureen, etc. So they've all got their own reasons why they need to access it, but I've certainly got a database. And as Malcolm right. says, they might not be selling now, but in five years, 10 years' time, yeah. they'll be selling sooner or later. And yeah, if you if you front of mind, they'll phone you. Yeah. So when I when I speak of CRM, I mean customer relationship management. I mean a system, not necessarily our red one. But uh, so Rob's using a system, and what I was suggesting, uh, what we've spoken about before, is don't try and recreate Rob's system on Outlook and, and Excel. It's an older way of doing it. We've got a, a modern database that can send out flyers. It's really pre-made. It can do all sorts of clever stuff. So just. Just bear that in mind. But now we go on to that last, uh, the last two questions. How will you grow your business to the next level? So Malcolm's already said that his business is, you know, he's looking at the database, looking at social media, looking at branding his car as a way to grow his business. Um, Kathy, what is your plan? I've lost Kathy. Oh, yeah. No, you can't talk without opening your mouth. <laughs> There we go. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be forced to grow. Um, Courtney's moving down to Howick uh, in January. So I am really going to have to get on my bicycle and, and do a lot more sectional title and that sort of thing to, to keep the ball rolling. Um, but there's no way I'm going to slow down. I hate to tell you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Gary, what's your plan for growing your business? I'm going to use networking and referrals um, and more visibility and events. Uh, got a park event coming up on the 12th of December in Rampart Bridge. Uh, let me see if I can go up against Graham Reed and kick his ass, which is a big challenge because <laughs> uh, he's the master in the area. But yeah, I take that as a challenge. And uh, yeah, referrals, I've been in the business six years now, so uh, referral database to me is very important. I think uh, I think everybody else will agree. Okay, so the, I think the point of this is that uh, when you ask a top performing agent how they're going to grow their business, they've got an answer. They don't go, oh yeah, I must really like do it. They've got you know, Kathy says I'm going for sectional title. That's my plan. Yeah, you know, Gary's got a very specific idea. So I think that's um, I don't, Rob. Did you answer this question? I don't know. I don't know if I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a long day. No, I, I, I didn't answer that. I got a, a rude phone call there. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so just to blow your theory out the water, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, would, I would probably say I don't have a plan for growing. I don't know that we've got the capacity to grow. Um, both of us, Robin and I, are literally seven days a week at the moment. Um, and it's, it's got to be close to a 10 hour a day on average type of day type of thing. The only way I could see us growing would be to get in a very strong admin assistant type person 
who does even more of the admin type stuff than what we do. And we literally walk in and she says, there's a valuation pack. This is the address, off you go type of thing, which, yeah, it is, is probably the only way that we could grow. Um, but at the moment, we are literally flat out is what we're doing. Okay, cool. Okay, that sounds like a lovely problem to have, but I mean, you've got the solution. So, okay, guys, we've got four minutes left. Um, so the last question has got to do with the co property COSA system. Now, you, uh, the property COSA, our NGL attorney, PFS, is the system. And you guys use the whole system. What are your thoughts on using the system as a complete unit or or not? I mean, just what what's going on in your heads with the, the, the property COSA model? Is it good, bad? Are you... You know, do you see better systems out there? What is your, can we start with, uh, Gary, you unmuted, so you can go first. Yeah, it's very simple. Um, it's a winning, it's a winning system. It's a winning bouquet of system. 80% of clients uh, are happy to go with Jenny and she does a fantastic job. Uh, why not? The client's not paying for that service. And secondly, NGL, again, it's on our panel that it's easy to persuade the sellers to go with that. And there you go. You've got the whole, and you've got control. I want control. I want to know if the bond's going to be approved and then what's happening on treasure map with the conveyancing. Because we do have to nag NGL. They are good. Uh, they're not perfect. Uh, but yeah, I've got two lodgements this week and I've had to chase every day because, you know, until they lodge, they won't register and it's Christmas and we all need Christmas money. Um, Rob, what, what do you, what is your thoughts on, um, on, on, the, on this matter? And also, um, I've forgotten how I was going to phrase it, but I mean, what do you what do you think about the the the, the system as it is compared well, to well, very very similar to to Gary? Um, it works. It's a package of, of uh, partners. Uh, NGL, I think, do a great job. Jenny does a great job, and that's all I want out of a partner that I'm working with is that they do a great job. Um, and if you're going to um, adhere to an eighty twenty split then one must realize that, that they are part of that. And as long as they're doing their job, if we can retain control, I'm 100% behind them and, and the system. Can I ask you something, uh, Rob? What about the, um, I mean, can you, it's quite a hard, okay, let me not ask that. Let me, let me not. Okay, um, where's Kathy? Kathy, are you, are you on board with this? Can you, can you answer this one? Um, yes. Uh, look, more than happy. Um, I, I do have a lot of clients that come to me and go, you told me to use NGL and this is happening. And it's normally something that NGL hasn't done. It's normally something, but they've got, they've got to have someone to blame. And unfortunately, it will, it will always be me and the attorneys. So, um, you know, th th such is life. But I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're doing the deals, then then you are going to have the hassles. They can't all go straightforwardly. You've got to you've got to realize in this job that there are going to be ups and downs. There are two deals that I've been dealing with for the last two weeks that have nearly made me give up real estate. I've got to be dead honest with you. It it has been so horrendous. I've dealt with abuse. I've dealt with swearing from old ladies. I've dealt with people living in the jungle in Jamaica swearing at me. It's just <laughs> okay. you you okay, really do one. have to. We got one minute left. Sorry to rush you, um, Malcolm. What's your? How do you get your? Nearly all of your deals are through NGL. What do you say to an agent who says, "Oh no, I, the clients just won't use. They've got their own attorney." What, what do you say to that when people tell you that? Uh, you? Well, well, to be honest, to be honest, um, you you've got control when it's it's with uh, NGL or P, uh, PFSL. Uh, our bond attorney so it's it's you are in control and i like uh, the office because it allows me to take the phone and phone jenny and phone carrie and phone somebody straight to say what is happening with this mm -hmm. so it's a nice full package unlike somebody that i don't even know never met you know how will i deal with other person yeah okay thank so you. It's a great deal. okay guys thank you very much we've got 40 seconds left so we can't really talk anymore um, I think that was wonderful though. I will repackage this. I will give you the four overarching ideas. And I think it's don't be patient, be urgent, follow the script and use the program. Stop lying for yourself. It's a full-time job and get up, show up and make it happen.
And I think those are basically what 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 these guys. And coincidentally, what they've said, and I, I did prompt them a bit, but that's very much what the Americans said too. So well done. Thanks very much for your time, guys. I'm gonna I'll package this into something that you can watch. But uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime. Uh, I think it's quite valuable. Right. Thanks. Just thanks. one final thing. One final thing, Anton. Just be proactive, not reactive. I've learned that. Three seconds. Two seconds. Go and sell some houses. Adios.